Hello everyone. Tonight on our program, the Internal Audit Agency hints of prosecuting some state institutions over misappropriation of COVID-19 expenditure. Those we think have criminal consequences, we work with Yoko to prosecute them. I'm not allowed to indicate what we are doing or the level of prosecution, but I can assure you that at the moment we are working with Yoko to prosecute three institutions. Also coming up, the Traders Advocacy Group urges all its members to increase prices of goods and services by 80% following the review of the benchmark values to 30% by government. Press conference, creating an awareness of this new development to all our members and urging them to increase the prices of goods and services by 80%. Also tonight, oil production in Ghana likely to face threats if measures are not put in place to review some laws guiding the industry that's warning from the Public Interest and Accountability Committee. My name is Daryl Kwao. Thanks for staying with us tonight. The Internal Audit Agency has hinted of prosecuting some state institutions over misappropriation of COVID-19 expenditure. According to its Director General, Dr. Eric Odro Osai, his outfit is working with the Economic and Organized Crime Office, Yoko, to fast track the processes for prosecution. He called for the measure of performance and financial audit to track COVID-19 spending across the country. More from the Ghana Anti-Corruption Coalition Public Forum. Speaking at the Ghana Anti-Corruption Coalition Public Forum on the accountability gap in the COVID-19 responses of Ghana, the Director General of the Internal Audit Agency, Dr. Eric Odrosai, pledged his outfit's commitment to ensure accountability in COVID-19 expenditure. We also set up at the agency audit report review panels. Now, in 2021, we started re receiving internal audit reports from the internal auditors as far as COVID Areas where we had challenges, we do a follow-up. A team is sent to the field to go and then validate. Those we think have criminal consequences, we work with Yoko to prosecute them. I'm not allowed to indicate what we are doing or the level of prosecution but I can assure you that at the moment, we are working with the Yoko to prosecute three institutions. My difficulty is that most of the key institutions that are supposed to police public expenditure, as far as COVID is concerned, are using financial audit. You can track, the money would go, but did it make the impact? Member, Well, um, our constitution is very clear that whenever monies are voted for projects, to account for it, there must be an auditor to audit it as an independent body. And the findings of the auditor must be communicated to parliament. The parliament will then debate the reports and where necessary to form a committee to do a follow-up. Now, again, the constitution gave power to parliament to establish committees in the performance of our duty to ensure that uh, those committees are given specific uh, function. If once the parliament determined, committee can be given the mandate to investigate or make an inquiry into certain activity. The Ghana Anti-Corruption Coalition seeks to promote anti-corruption and good governance initiatives in Ghana. The Institute of Internal Auditors has, has indicated its readiness to work together with the Internal Audit Agency for effective resource allocation. According to President of the Institute of Internal Auditors, Harriet Ekuya Kakari, the move will facilitate and provide quality services. She says syncing with the Internal Audit Agency will enhance efficiency and accountability in the management of resources in the public sector. She made this known at a ceremony to launch the rebranding of the Institute. There's more in this report. The rebranding of the Institute of Internal Auditors is to help the organization evolve and adapt to meet the changing needs of members, stakeholders, and the profession as a whole. President Harriet Ikiakakari said the Institute will empower internal auditors to enhance their value addition to impact the profession and the society. Our members like it because it comes with good remuneration. So our members want the service and I believe that it will enhance the profession as well. So when the service is introduced, it will be better for our members. Former president of the institute, Daniel Kofi Kwampa, urged the new administration to pursue programs to increase certified auditors in the country. The new things I want them to pursue is to continue to 
increase the number of certified internal auditors in Ghana. They should pursue a vigorous program so that we have as many certified internal auditors in Ghana as we can. And I believe it will elevate the profession and make the required impact. The issue of internal auditors is aspiring to be a leading organization in Africa by elevating professionalism. The Traders Advocacy Group is urging all its members to increase prices of their goods and services by 80% following the review of the benchmark values to 30% by government. The group that claims to have database of all traders across the country uh, to the tune of 10,000 says it's disappointed with government's position but unperturbed by the decision. It's also challenging the Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya to arrest the city's depreciation against the dollar as promised, else they'll pass the cost on to consumers. In February this year, government decided to engage various trade organizations to solicit their views on the best way to implement the policy on the reversal of the benchmark values on import duties. Deputy Minister of Finance Dr. John Kuma and the Commissioner of the Ghana Revenue Authority in charge of customs led the conversation. But the Traders Advocacy Group is expressing disappointment with the lack of coordination and communication between these governmental agencies and the overall outcome. Here is the General Secretary, Nana Poku. By this press conference, creating an awareness of this new development to all our members and urging them to increase the prices of goods and services by 80%. Just as government has done, after all, what is good for the goose is good for the gander. It's not our fault. Government has not resourced any single trader in the country to start trading. So at the end of the day, if government wants more, as we the traders, we also will not lose our capitals. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, we are also by this press conference calling on the Vice President of Ghana to arrest the rise of the dollar against the city, as he promised. Mr. Vice President, where are you? That is the question everybody is asking. Nanapoku also said that traders are not perturbed about the support other trader groups have given to government regarding the review of the benchmark values policy. It's good for our members and the entire trading public is what we are advocating for. So those that have come out in support of government, bravo. But we, what we are saying is what is so important to us, that if government had gone up 80%, our traders are being urged to also go 80%. It's as simple as A, B, C. No. Let me explain this. The, 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 the government is so smart. Making it as if um, <laughs> the reduction is 30%. It's not 30%. The benchmark values has become a subject of controversy after the Association of Ghana Industries kicked against the policy, though government has reduced the benchmark values on general goods from 50 to 30%. The country's petroleum production is likely to face threats if measures are not put in place to review some laws guiding the industry. That's according to findings of the Public Interest and Accountability Committee, PIAC, after assessing 10 years of petroleum revenue management in Ghana. The threat could impact both local and international activities. Now, according to the findings, some of the concerns that could affect the industry include the growing discussion on energy transition and impact of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement on local content legislation. Conservation on energy transition from fossil fuel to clean energy is likely to affect the country's revenue from the oil and gas sector. The report also highlights some regulations that need to be reviewed in local content in order to cater for the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, giving some highlights to launch the report on Ghana's 10 years in oil production. Chairman of the Public Interest and Accountability Committee, Kweku Adofrimpon, called on stakeholders to intervene as soon as possible with reviews to both policies and regulations in the petroleum sector. But remember, Africa AFCFTA, when they come in, 
Those members, whether they are Ghanaians or not, they also become local. Then we have energy transition. The emerging energy transition has also affected the upstream petroleum industry globally. And Ghana is no exception. And then we have a problem or challenges underlying sensing. The energy transition poses real challenges to competition, competitive world bidding as the default system of the licensing. Hence, there's the need for fundamental relook at the way licensing is to be done in the future. These are their findings. Responding to some of the recommendations, a Deputy Minister of Energy, Andrew Japamesa, admitted that although there may be challenges, work has begun to correct most of the concerns raised. If we're dealing with local participation, okay, local content and local participation, there are provisions that relate to entities that are incorporated in Ghana and there are uh, um, regulations that deal with Ghanaian participation and so yes any company that is incorporated in Ghana is Ghanaian but there are provisions that deal with Ghanaian who then incorporate companies that are Ghanaian and the level of participation that those entities can uh, I don't have the detail here but I'm saying that adequate provision has been made to ensure that Ghanaians and non ghanaian but Ghanaian registered entities including those that come under the AFC, FTA uh, are all catered for. The report also revealed that Ghana earned about $6.55 billion from oil and gas production by the end of 2020. You're watching Business Live. Still to come, as we mark Ghana Month, we take a look at locally produced items losing appeal. But later now we it used to be a very popular soup until new products were introduced to the market. But this time, sales is not bad at all due to the expensive nature of the small. Welcome back uh, to Business Live. It's a brand new month, and we are celebrating Ghana. And as we always do in the month of, as we always do in the month of March. Now, sadly, some Ghanaian goods are losing appeal, 
and my colleague Beverly Boom has been finding out why in this report. Great report in there from uh, Beverly. Uh, time now for your money tips on Money Lab. Hi, welcome to the Money Lab. Today we'll look at another index in Ghana and it is the GSE Financial Stocks Index. Now, this index is a measure of the performance of all listed financial entities in Ghana. Now, they include the listed banks and the listed insurance companies such as Enterprise Group, SIC. And that's our program tonight. Thanks for watching. More news on our website, myjoyonline.com forward slash business. We are leaving you with a look at what's happening on the commodity market. Thanks for watching.